We have come a pretty long way in studying uh, the New Testament books. So what, uh, what book are we in tonight? Okay, let's see. All right, let's start with Owen. Second Peter? Second Peter, no, but you are uh, close by. Let's go with Savannah. First John. First John, good. How did you know? Because last, last time we did First Peter. Very good. Okay, great. Yeah, First John. So, okay. All right, so let's talk about what First John is about. First, let's talk about uh, who wrote it. Okay, so who wrote First John? Remember to raise your hand if you have questions or comments. So, uh, Katie? John. Guys? I'm talking. Yes, John, correct. Now, uh, there are a couple Johns in the Bible, but you know this guy. Or First of all, how do we know that John wrote this book, wrote First John? Because it wasn't always called First John. So that's where it's a little tricky. So, because at first it was just a letter, and they knew who wrote it, but it doesn't say his name like, uh, like Paul. Um, yeah, Kenzie, what do you think? It's right here. Where? Right here. Okay. Well, that yeah, that's not scripture though. That gives you notes, which are uh, probably true in explaining it's, it. But it's it's, 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 writing? it's very similar to another book where it uses a, a lot of the same language that, that makes us uh, realize, and through history, uh, realize that John wrote it. There's another book in the New Testament written by this guy who is an eyewitness, really close friend of Jesus. What other book is that that you think he wrote? Yeah. John. He wrote the book of, yeah. He wrote also the Gospel of John. Yeah, exactly. So he wrote first one. So you wrote John, first John, second John, and third John. And there's one more book that John wrote in the New Testament. First John, Jude? second John, third John, the Gospel of John, that's four. There's one more. Jude? Not Jude. Revelation. Revelation, yeah. So, uh, so Wait, we only have two more weeks of Awana? We only have, uh, we have a couple more nights where we'll do uh, teaching like this because we have some... Uh, events like we'll be off for Easter and stuff like that, or Grand Prix, and then awards night. So, okay. anyway, okay. Uh, all right, so we'll get into this. Seth, go ahead. Yeah, question or comment? Well, mine says, my Bible says right here who wrote it. Yes, um, that's true. And those are notes that somebody put in there to help you, but that's not the original like uh, Bible that like it's not the letter that John wrote. Does that make okay, sense? Like right here. Yeah. Okay, so it's John. Okay, and this is someone who knew Jesus and walked with him and saw him face to face and saw him die and saw him uh, rise from the grave. And John's nickname was the apostle that Jesus loved. And Jesus loved a lot of people, uh, but John kind of calls himself this because he's, um, that's it's kind of what he focuses on. He focuses a lot on love. He focuses a lot on uh, truth. And he writes this letter of uh, 1 John to deal with this question which we can talk about in just a second. But it's how do you know you have eternal life? Okay, so what is, uh, what is eternal life? Uh, let's start with Owen. Then. Everlasting life. Okay, everlasting life, okay. Um, let's go to Kenzie and then Tilly and you, Seth. You die, but you live forever because you go up to God and live with him in heaven. Okay, yes, eternal life with God in heaven, okay. Um, and how do you get eternal life? Um, by believing Jesus Christ died for your sins. Okay, correct. Good. And Tilly, what were you going to add? Same thing. Same thing? Okay. Um, and then Seth, anything else to add? Eternal life means that you believed in God, you went up to heaven, and you'll be, you'll be there for the rest of your life. Okay. All that's true, but something... Eternity. Some for the rest of eternity, so it goes on forever. It also means... Um, and that's given by God, right, through salvation and Jesus. But eternal life actually doesn't start when you die. It starts when? When does eternal life start for the when Christian? You die, when you believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah, when you believe in Jesus. So eternal life, if you're a Christian, is actually something you're experiencing so what right I now. Said? What's that? So what I said? 
Similar, yeah. <laughs> you know, what you said was, was true. Okay, but here's the deal. A lot of people think they're Christians or may even believe certain truth about Jesus, but they're not Christians. Um, they, they do not show evidence or fruit that they really are Christians. And sometimes you may even wonder about yourself, which this is a good question to ask yourself every once in a while. How do I know if I really am a Christian? How do I really know if I have uh, eternal life? Well, John is... Uh, go ahead, Kenzie. Yeah. You could ask an eight ball. <laughs> you could ask an eight ball, but you know, do you really want to have your eternal life and salvation depend on you know, an eight ball. So, but, okay, so John's going to answer that question. Who wants to read a, uh, a verse? Me. Okay, hang on. This is at the end when John says one of the reasons that he wrote his, uh, his book, okay, his letter. Okay, so we'll start with Seth. Uh-huh. Okay, it's okay. We'll get anyone who wants to read, we'll read. Okay. 1 John 5, 13. So we're going a little later in the book first to see. John basically t- says right up front, this is why I wrote this. So it helps us understand. So I write these things to you, God. Believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Okay, so why does uh, John write the book? He says... In there, so that, I wrote wrote these things so that you may what? Seth? Know that you have eternal life. Yeah, so that you may know, so it doesn't have to be a guess, uh, that you, uh, whoops, have, I'm going to put eternal life. Okay. So, now this is pretty important, because if you don't have eternal life, we're in eternal death if you don't have eternal life. So that's, it's pretty serious, right? So it's about salvation or condemnation. So, okay. So we need to know. Um, so, and, and by the way, if you don't have, if you look at John and you say, well, wait a second, I'm not really a Christian. That's a good thing because then you could say, well, now I can believe in Jesus and, and uh, actually have eternal life. And if you are a Christian, then you'll look at First John and you'll say, yeah, this shows that I do have eternal life, that, that my belief in Jesus is true. Okay, um, Okay. so let's look at some of these uh, different tests here. Okay, who else? Uh, Kenzie, do you want to read next? Okay, let's do, uh, we'll come back. Okay, Kenzie, we're going to look at... Okay, let's have you do First John... One, and I'm going to have you read verses, uh, verses five through seven. Here is the message we have heard from him and announced to you. God is light. There is no darkness in him at all. Suppose we say that we share life with God, but still walk in the darkness. Then we are lying. lying. We are not living out the truth. Okay, very good. So the first one is it says God is something, which the Bible doesn't do that that often, but it does a couple times in John. It says God is what? Like. Uh, not life, although that, that could be true. Ezra? Light. Light. It sounds like life, so I understand why he said that. Uh, God is light. Okay, so this means that God is... Well, God is light because it is in one of my verses. Okay, yeah. Yes, that's true. Um I'm not, but in this verse it says God is light, which means God is true, okay, and he's holy. And what is darkness uh, in this context? It doesn't mean like the light outside or something like that, but what is darkness in, uh, in the Bible? Uh, Tilly? The sin? It's, yeah, darkness would be, uh, that's a good way to put it, would be kind of equivalent with like sin or uh, what else? Satan and evil. Satan evil, uh, and then anything else? In the Bible, darkness. Dark magic. Well, when it's dark, it's hard to what? See. See, yeah. So that See doesn't, so See. it means also See. that you're uh, in darkness, there's this idea of being blind. So people who aren't, don't know the truth or don't accept the truth, we would say that they're acting like they're blind. 
Okay, so God doesn't want that. God is light. Okay, so it says if somebody in that verse, it says if somebody walks in darkness, Satan is darkness. Okay, yeah. It says if somebody walks in darkness, that we lie and we do not practice the truth. So if somebody says they're a Christian, but they're walking in darkness, meaning they're being committed to, to sin, evil, blindness, they're not submitting to God's truth, does that mean they're... So what does that mean about that person? Is it possible that they may not be a Christian? Yeah. And the answer is yes. So that's... Now sometimes we all sin... So we all participate in darkness sometimes, but it's what is the, what's the big picture? What's the pattern of somebody's life? Okay, who else wants to, to read? Let's go to, uh, let's go to K- uh, Tilly, and then we'll do Katie and Seth. Okay. All right. Katie, can you read? This one might be one of your Rwanda verses. 1 John 1, 8 through 10. Okay. Okay. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Okay. Verse 10. If we say we have no not sin, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Okay. So, that verse, you guys have 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Is that one of your Awana verses? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No? Some of you are saying yes, some of you say no. Some of you may not have gotten to it. Okay. If, if somebody confesses their sins to God and asks for forgiveness because of the work of Jesus, um, will God forgive that person? Yep. The answer is yes. But what if somebody says, like verse 8, it says, if we say we have no sin, what if somebody says, I don't have any sin to confess to God? What, what does that mean? What does verse 8 say that that person's doing? What, would you believe somebody that, says that, you, that said, I don't have any sin? No. I've, I haven't done anything wrong. Well, how come you wouldn't believe them? Because you can't live a life without sin. Everybody sins, can't live a life without sin. Okay? So it says... Th- it says in the verse that, that then we are fooling ourselves. Yeah, it means you're fooling yourself. It means you're trying to trick yourself into thinking that you don't have sin, even though you know that you do. Um, so the the mark of one of the, uh, the one of the marks of a true Christian is that they confess their sin to God and they acknowledge that they have sin. They don't pretend they don't have it. Here's another one that people may do. Um, so it's not that Christians never sin; it's that they have a different attitude about their sin before God uh, and that they confess it. Um, in verse ten, it says, "If we say that we have not sinned, meaning you may say, okay, I've sinned." Uh, before, but I, you may not say I don't have any sin, but you may say, look, I don't really, I don't really do that. I don't really sin. Um, it says that we are lying and God's word is not in us. So it's like saying, okay, well, I don't really do anything that offends God, um, which isn't true. So anyway, if okay. If you're lying, you're offending God. Yeah, exactly. So, so one of the ways is to, for you guys to think about is how do you know if you have eternal life? Well, how do you treat sin in your life? Do you confess it to God? Do you try to repent and, and ask for forgiveness? Or are you saying, well, I don't really have anything to confess. I don't really, you know, you don't take sin that seriously. Um, so anyway, uh, John goes on. Who wants to, Katie, I think, or no, uh, Tilly, you were next, right? Okay. Uh, here's another one. It's about how we respond to God's uh, word. So 1 John 2, let's see. At least 2, 3, let me see if I want to go further. Okay, let's do 2, 3 through 5. Okay. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. 
Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Okay, so it says, remember, we want to know if you have eternal life. Well, John says very clearly, this is how we know we've come to know him. So he gives it very clearly, and then uh, what does verse 3 say? If we what? If we keep, keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. So this has to do with uh, commandments or God's word. And so it's, are you, are you being obedient and trying to be obedient to God's word? Now, does any Christian obey God's word perfectly? No. 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 That's the point. That's why Jesus saves us from our sins. And we confess our sin. But um, the Christian actually cares what God says and tries to follow it. And when they don't, they confess their sin. Okay, so our attitude is that we follow what the word of God says. Or that's what we should. Now, if somebody says, you know, I'm a Christian, I've come to know God, but doesn't care about God's word or keeping God's commandments, uh, what does John say about that person? If you say you know God, but you don't keep his commandments, what does John say? Is that person... A liar. He, John uses really strong language there. He says that person is a liar and the truth is not in him. That that's, uh, you're lying to yourself, you're lying to God, you're lying to people around you. So John says, look, you know what? You believed in Jesus. That is how someone gets saved. But how do you know someone really believed? Because you can't tell if somebody, I can't look at someone and say, okay, that person believes in Jesus. I can just see it in them. What would I, but what would I be able to see in that person's life if they believe in Jesus? What would they care about? The commandments. They would care about the commandments. And I would ask them if they, if you, if they know the commandments, because I know the commandments by heart. Okay. Well, it's not just talking about the Ten Commandments, but that's good. It's talking about all of God's yeah. Word. So what things Jesus says, things we've been reading in the New Testament. Um, yeah, okay, let's see. Uh, who else Who else would like to read? Tilly, we had you read already, so we'll circle back to you. Yeah. We had you read too. Seth, we, nobody else wants to read? Okay. Seth, um, let's have you read First uh, John. 2, and then 15 through 17, okay? 15 through So this is going to talk about the difference between Christians and non-Christians and uh, what they love and what they don't love, okay? So Seth, whenever you're ready, go ahead and read that. Do not love the world over anything in the world. If anyone loves the him, for everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the just of his eyes, the boasting of what he does come not from the Father, but from the world. Okay. So it tells you. Yeah, did, go ahead. Did 17. Um, the world and its despires pass away, but the man who does the will of God will live forever. Okay. So it tells you not to love something. Okay. It says, do not love. And then it tells, tells you what not to love as a Christian. Do not love anything more than God. Okay, that's true. It's not exactly what Do not what this... love the world. Do not love the world. Okay. Are we allowed to love our animals? Yes, you're allowed to love your animals. When, yeah, it use, yes. when it uses this word, that's actually a good point. When it uses this idea of the world, you have to be careful in the Bible what it's talking about. Because God, in John 3.16, 3, it says God loved the world. Okay, And now he's telling us not to love the world. So what does that mean? Well, sometimes the world means the earth that God created. Sometimes it means the people. Sometimes it means God's people, the believers. Sometimes it means just humanity in general. 
In this case, it means the evil world system that's against so God. The people? Huh? So the people? No, it's not even about the people. It's about loving um, everything that in this world that stands against God. That's what God's talking about here in the world. He says, don't love the world system that hates God. Because if you love that and you want to be a part of that, that shows that you're, you're an enemy of God. But if you love doing the will of God, that shows you have eternal life. Uh, Kenzie, did you have a question or comment? Well, I was going to say, do not love the, like, the bad people in the world, like evil yeah. robbers and stuff. Well, I mean, you can even love them. Obviously, there's an accountability. Well, Jesus says to love your enemies. But, yeah. the, uh, but yes, God is, is not calling you to love uh, the, the sins or crimes that people commit. He, what he's talking about here is that he says it's okay to love, you know, the world has a lot of great things about it because God created it, but the world also is in sin, and so there's a sinful world system that's against God that's, that's passing away. Okay, so the, that's going to go away when Jesus returns. Um, the, so if you're loving something that's passing away, God says, well, that's not the sign of somebody who has eternal life. That's what John is getting at here. Okay, um, another verse. Who wants to read? Tilly, you had your hand up before you want to read? Okay, can you read? Let's see here. Okay, can you read 1 John? There's a lot of reading in this lesson. Yeah. There's not normally this much reading. Sure there is. 4, I'm... 7, and 8. And we'll get another... Uh, God is this statement. Okay, so, but Tilly, whenever you're ready, go ahead and start reading that. Okay. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love God, who does not love does not know God, because God is love. Okay, so... This verse commands us to do something. Tilly, what does it command us to do? Love. Yeah. Love, and in John, he, love is a big deal in John. He uses that word a lot. And he means particularly, uh, John makes this argument. He says, look, if you say I love God, that's very easy to say, right? But if I say I love, my, uh, I love God, but I hate my Christian brother, I just hate that guy, does... Do those things match? No. Well, why not? Because God is love. Yeah, because as it says here, God, God is a God is a Christian basically. Is if love. you hate a well, Christian, you hate God. Well, yeah, God is love and fr and love is from God and, and John says if you have hate in your heart toward another child of God that God has saved, it shows that you don't really know God and that you don't really love God because he says everyone who loves God loves the child born of him. So if people hate uh, each other, other Christians especially, it shows that they don't really uh, know God or love God is what it's getting at can there. You, so well, can you not? You don't have to. You don't have to like. Like you don't. You shouldn't hate them, but you don't have to be best friends with them either. That is correct, but the the point is this: What's your you know What's the attitude of your heart toward other? Uh, people in general and Christian brothers and sisters in particular. Um, so yes, you can't possibly be best friends with everybody. Even Jesus has, John was a closer disciple than a lot of other people. That being said, he, uh, that doesn't give us an excuse not to, not to love people just because we can't have enough time for uh, that type of close friendship. Okay, let's see here. Okay, uh, okay, we'll do... Yeah, we'll do a last verse. Okay, Kenzie, do you want to read the last yeah. verse? Okay. Uh, this one is one I think you guys have. It's a cubby verse, too, so maybe. <laughs> verse John 4, 10 and 11. So when the Bible says God is love, a lot of times people uh, do a lot of playing around with this word love. Okay, they just mean anything I like is loving and good. Anything I don't like is not love. And so when they say God is love, they just mean whenever... I say God, or whatever agrees with me is love. Um, but the Bible doesn't define God or love that way. 
it, it does it through an example. What's the, what's the biggest example of God's love in the Bible? Tilly? When God died on the cross for us? Yeah, when God sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. So, uh, Kenzie, can you go ahead and read that? 1 John 4.10. Here is what love is. It is not that we loved God. It is that he loved us and sent his son to give his life to pay for our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us this much, we should also love one another. Yeah, so it says that we know love by this, that God sent uh, his son. And he uses uh, a word there that may not be in all of your Bibles, which means uh, to be the, I think the Kenzie years uses the word payment for sin which means propitiation. This means that satisfies God's wrath or justice, that Jesus died for us. Uh, now, this is a, where it gets to be a tricky question. Who, who killed Jesus, ultimately? There's a conspiracy with the Romans and the Jews and bad people that did that. But who, who directed Jesus' death, ultimately? Uh, let's go with Katie. Judas. Uh, Judas is involved. But I'm talking about someone who's not bad. Kenzie? God. God, yeah. God sent Jesus to be the sacrifice for our sins. So that was uh, showing... God killed his own son. Yes. Because um, when they poked showed... him with the stick, he, um, he was already dead. Yeah. And did Jesus, did God do this against Jesus as well? And Jesus like, wait, what are you doing to me? No, Jesus agreed uh, to this. So that's, this is how the Bible says that you know love. And then it says that if, if God loved us, then we should what? Love well, we should love him, but also if you love God, who else are you going to love? Every Christian. Yeah, you're going to love one another is what the verse talks about. Yeah, Kenzie, last question. Jesus agreed to, well, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yeah, you're, I think you're on the right track. Jesus agreed, and he was the, he has control over death. Yes. So he killed himself. Basically, he too. yes, yeah. he offered himself as a sacrifice yeah. um, and took on God's wrath. Yeah, because if Jesus just died on the cross and it had nothing to do with God, um, then that wouldn't pay for our sins. That would just be a man dying on a cross. But he died for our sins um, as a sacrifice. And, um, well, um, he forgave one of the men on the cross the next to him. Correct. So yes. So Jesus even saved people who were. Right on the edge there. So anyway, let's uh, close in a word of prayer and then go to handbook time. Owen, turn around. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this uh, time at Awana where we can study your words, study your love, and, uh, and the tests of whether we know uh, we have eternal life. We pray that, uh, that we would look at our own lives and examine ourselves and to see if we um, are truly being sensitive to your commandments, loving one another, and confessing our sins. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help us with those things to have that clarity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's go to handbook time.